Hey, it is 11 o'clock. Um, I hope everyone had a really good break. Uh, my name is Nikki Hanger, and I am the Forestry Program Coordinator at SCRA, and I will be moderating this session today. So thank you for joining us um, for this fun and interactive game. Um, for the next 45 minutes, we will be playing a Watershed in Jeopardy, hosted by Katie Sickman, who is our Invasive Species Coordinator, and Jeremiah Walters, who is our naturalist. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A um, chat box. And then there's also a regular chat box for general concerns. So with that, I will let Katie and Jeremiah take it away. Awesome. So like Nikki said, my name is Katie Sickman. And uh, I'm Jeremiah Walton. And we will pull up our presentation here. One second. Yeah, that's awesome. So today we are going to um, play. Well, first, we're going to be presenting about um, invasive species, uh, more specifically aquatic invasive species um, in the St. Croix River watershed. And then we're going to be playing a game of um, Jeopardy to kind of apply what you have learned during this presentation to a, a fun game. So um, to start out, uh, we're going to be talking about aquatic invasive species today. And like Nikki had mentioned, both Jeremiah and myself are from the St. Croix River Association. Um, and we work throughout the entire St. Croix River watershed. So you may be wondering what a watershed is. So outlined um, here is the St. Croix River watershed. So as you can see, half of it is in Minnesota and half of it's in Wisconsin, but actually more of it is in Wisconsin than Minnesota. Um, it's roughly 7,800 square miles. It's very big. It's um, even bigger than the state of New Jersey. Um, it looks like it's in the uh, shape of a heart, which is really cool. And then right in the middle of it, uh, you can see the St. Croix River. Um, and then this Namakagan River starting in Cable flows all the way um, from Wisconsin into the St. Croix River. It's called a tributary. So a watershed is anything that starts from a high point and then drains to a low point. And that low point is going to be uh, the St. Croix River in this case. So... Um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about the uh, St. Croix River watershed. And so um, going into uh, the next part, we're going to pass it on over to Jeremiah. Katie and I are actually sitting right next to each other, <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, so before we dive into invasive species, we should maybe define what a native species is and learn more about that. Uh, so native species uh, kind of originated or still lives in a certain geographic region. So for instance, the St. Croix River watershed, we could think of that today as our uh, certain geographic region. Um, they have evolved with other species in the ecosystem and play an important part in uh, the food web and the ecosystem that's there. So they, since they evolved, they have predators or they prey on others. So uh, they were not introduced by human activity. So that's kind of one of the defining characteristics. You wanna click the next yeah. one? Thank you. So we're going to learn a few uh, native species that are home to the, or that call the St. Croix River their home. So 41 species of native freshwater mussels live in the, uh, in the water that we call the St. Croix River, uh, which is the richest population of freshwater mussels of the entire world. Um, five of those species are fed federally endangered, and you can see them here. So we got the sheep nose mussel, the Higgins eyes, Higgins eyes pearly mussel, spectacle case, snuffbox, and winged maple. Here's a fun, cute little critter, uh, the river otter. So we've seen plenty of these in the river. Um, they are great uh, to watch and play in the water, um, but they also, so like we mentioned earlier, play an important part in the food web. So these actually feed on freshwater mussels. So these, uh, these uh, animals rely on those mussels. Uh, a native plant, um, wild rice. So wild rice, um, has been in the St. Croix River watershed for centuries and has been harvested by native or the indigenous people that uh, originally called this place their home. So those are just a couple of uh, native species to the St. Croix River watershed. There's a plenty, plenty, um, but we just thought we'd touch on a few and they're, they're so important to our ecosystems and habitats and just the food web like Jeremiah was saying. So there is a species that 
aren't from here that we call invasive species. Um, so they're not from our area. They aren't originally from our watershed or our state or our region. Um, they come here from other uh, means of transportation, either by human activity. Um, they produce lots of seeds or eggs, and so that they can really outcompete our native species. Uh, they don't typically have any natural predators, and so that also makes them spread because um, there's nothing to control them. And they can tolerate many conditions. As most of you may know, uh, our winters are very cold, um, and usually they can tolerate that and um, survive uh, throughout the years. As you can see on the right, there's this food web, and like Jeremiah was um, mentioning before, the food web is really essential to any habitat and ecosystem. Um, and these invasive species can disrupt this food web. So for example, I'll be talking about carp um, here pretty soon. They eat zo zooplankton and phytoplankton. So that disrupts the food web um, because they outcompete resources from our native fish. Um, and so we um, we'll be talking about two invasive species today in, in particular, but there's a lot of invasive species that inhabit the St. Croix River watershed. So here's just a couple. Um, number one, that's the Chinese um, and Chinese mystery snail, abandoned mystery snail. Number two is uh, curly leaf pondweed. Number three is Eurasian water milfoil. Both number two and three, they're called submerged aquatic invasive species. Number four, that's a carp. Uh, number five, that is a nasty looking sea lamprey. So we actually don't have them in the St. Croix River watershed, but they have them up in the Great Lakes region. So Lake Superior, and it's also included as an invasive species. Number six is purple loose strife. Um, that's a plant, uh, a riparian plant that likes to grow in wetlands. Number seven, that's a rusty crayfish. So that particular crayfish is invasive. We do have native crayfish in our waters, um, but this one in particular is invasive. It outcompetes those other native uh, crayfish. Number eight is a zebra mussel. And then the final one at the bottom is a spiny water flea. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over back to Jeremiah and he's gonna tell you a little bit more about yellow iris. Yeah, so now we're going to dive into some more specifics on two types of uh, invasive species. So this first one that Katie mentioned is yellow iris. Um, so yellow iris is a, another plant similar to purple loosestrife, how it grows in riparian areas on the banks of a river. Um, but uh, what does it look like and where can you find it? So we see this beautiful looking yellow flower. Unfortunately, it's not the best flower to do things to the environment. So as, as good as it looks, it's just not good to have. Um, and where can you find it? Like I mentioned, in those riparian areas. Uh, on the bottom left photo, you can see two types of um, the bases of the leaves. So the blue one at the bottom is actually our native, which we'll learn about, the, our native iris, which we'll learn about in our next slide. And the top one is our uh, invasive species, the yellow iris, uh, which is another identifying factor when we can't see the flower. So like I mentioned, uh, we have a native iris which uh, in the watershed, which is the northern blue flag. Uh, this flower is good at stream bank stabilization. It provides shelter to the animals that you know run across the uh, stream bank, like the otters that I mentioned, and it is a great source of pollination for our pollinators. So what makes yellow iris bad? Uh, so it forms dense mats like you see in this photo. It's harmful to the native plants and animals through uh, poisonous and toxic um, chemicals in its roots. It outcompetes our native vegetation. It can alter hydrology of streams uh, by clogging the smaller feeder streams that go into um, like a bigger river like the St. Croix. And it reduces the habitat that, rely, uh, that relies on the aquatic wetland ecosystems. So how did it get here? Um, yellow iris was brought over to North Amer America in the late 1700s as an ornamental because it is such a pretty flower. Uh, however, it is originally native to parts of Europe, Asia, and Northern America. Africa. Right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it spreads through rhizomes in their roots, uh, so it forms clones. So you see these dense mats. A lot of those are just the same plant. And then the seeds, they float. So whenever there's a, a flooding event, these seeds, seeds can float up and just make their way downstream. All right, so next I'll be talking about big head and silver carp. Um, the top one is a uh, silver carp and the lower one is a big head carp. 
Um, and so there are two different kinds of carp. The silver one has a grayish green color on the top, so kind of by the dorsal fin area, and then it's silvery on its sides. Um, both on both the big head and silver carp, the eye sits really low on their head, um, and the head is scaleless with an upturned mouth. So they're kind of funky looking. Um, and the silver carp can grow up to four feet and weigh 75 to 100 pounds, which is pretty big for a fish. Um, and the big head carp is grayish green colored on top um, and it has numerous dark blotches on the side of the body. So usually that's the defining characteristic. If you um, are wondering if it's a silver carp or big head carp, it's uh, those blotches on the side of the body is a telltale sign. Um, like I said, their eyes also sit low on their head and their head is scaleless with an upturned mouth. And these ones can weigh up to um, 110 pounds. So they uh, can get much bigger than the silver carp. So the native range of uh, these carp are uh, in Asia, kind of by China. Um, they occur in freshwaters, including rivers and lakes in their native uh, China habitat. Mm -hmm. um, they typically need fast moving water uh, like rivers for spawning. Otherwise they prefer slow moving water such as lakes, ponds and flooded backwaters. So as you can see in these two maps, the red is that native range of where these carp are from. Um, and so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the distribution in North America. So this one right here is the distribution for big head carp. As you can see in the red, um, that is where they're located now in North America. Um, and it, they commonly occur in river um, systems. So if you look um, in that Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin area, that red right there is an indicator that they are in the Mississippi um, as well as uh, the lower St. Croix River. Um, now this one is a map of the silver carp distribution. So that again, that red is where they're located. And again, they like those river systems, um, kind of inhabit inhabiting the um, almost the entire Mississippi River, as well as the Illinois River, the Ohio River Basin. Um, and so they're, they're spreading for sure. So now I'm gonna talk specifically about the carp in the St. Croix River. Um, so like I said, they're located in the lower 20-ish uh, miles of the river. At least that's where they've been located as of now. So that's from Stillwater, if anybody's familiar with Stillwater area, down to Prescott and then into the Mississippi River. Um, so again, this is the watershed map just to kind of give you an idea. But if we take a closer look, um, here is where um, some big head and silver carp have been Um caught um, and located by Prescott, Lake St. Croix Beach, and then Bayport. So um, when I started here in 2018, I a big concern with a lot of people are these carp and, and they don't want them into the St. Croix River because they can have a lot of detrimental effects that I'll talk about later. Um, but they, um, professionals like National Park Service and, and the DNR have told me that the St. Croix River is a little bit too cold for these carp. So they like to swim up in the summer um, and hang out, but then they'll go back down in the Mississippi. So right now, um, as of 2021, 20, there is no known reproducing populations of carp in the St. Croix River, but that doesn't mean that you can't find them. Um, like I said, in the summers, they like to swim up um, and hang out on the St. Croix, but then usually they'll go back down in the Mississippi. So all right, so why are silver um, silver and big head carp bad for this area? Like I said, they're invasive species, their native range is back in Asia. So when they come over here, they don't have those native predators um, or natural predators um, that will keep them in control. And so their populations just take off. So they outcompete our native fish and mussels for food and resources. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, they feed on planktonic organisms like phytoplankton and zooplankton. So that really disrupts the food web and takes over those resources that our um, native species are wanting. Um, they also cause poor water quality because they they pretty much eat on everything. You know, they uproot vegetation causing um, poor water quality. And in this picture, this is a bunch of silver carp on the Illinois River. Um, so silver carp are known to jump many feet out of the water and hit recreational boaters and damage equipment. So um, I have never been on the Illinois River on, or the Ohio River Basin, um, but I hear it's really bad. They, they jump like this all the time. And um, they, I mean, you can't boat through this or you can't enjoy the river uh, when it's like this. So it's important that um, we, we control these invasive species. 
And so now I'm going to go into what can you do? So here's a, in the middle here, here's a common invasive species sign that you'll see at most um, rivers or lake accesses. Um, Minnesota and Wisconsin DNR, they can have a little bit different signages, but have the same message. So, you know, you want to inspect, remove, drain, um, and never move uh, plants or live fish away from a water body. Um, and so in the upper left-hand corner, you can see this trailer with all the weeds. So uh, whenever you are going from one water body to another, or one water body back home, you always want to make sure that you are cleaning your trailer, your boat, your kayaks, canoes of any vegetation um, or any dirt that you see, just clean that off. Um, right below that, you'll see this guy educating children. So that's a really important key step um, is, you know, once you learn about invasive species and why they're bad, go out and educate others. Or if you're on a trail with your friends, um, you know, um, share um, that education that you're learning today and, and every day about invasive species. Um, right below that, you can see this guy is cleaning off his boat with a pressure washer. So, yep, just make sure you're cleaning your boat, your kayak, your canoe, whatever you're taking out on the uh, water. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you can see a bucket full of bait. So, you never want to transport bait. So, if you're going out fishing with your friends or your family, um, you want to make sure you dispose of your bait at that. Um, full access site and, and don't transport it or dump it into the water. Um, so that's another reason how invasive species can spread. Um, if you're taking out your furry friend, whether it be a dog or a bunny, cat, whatever, uh, just make sure you're cleaning them off of any seeds or dirt that you see at that uh, either trailhead or, or uh, where you're at so they're not spreading. Um, and then right below, you can see this man is um, washing off his gear and equipment. So just making sure you're cleaning your boots, you're cleaning your equipment, and just making sure that you're not transporting unwanted invaders. All right. So with that, I'm just going to pull up the game, and Jeremiah is just going to talk a little bit about the Jeopardy and how we're going to do this. Yes. So let me see. So right now we do have a question that I can answer while Katie pulls that up. So how could you help the water quality. So there's plenty of ways, obviously not introducing invasive species, but also just kind of taking care of where you're walking in the watershed, whether that be, you know, if you're just on the side, side uh, sidewalk and you see plastic, you know, just picking that plastic up and uh, making sure that it's not going into the water. But there's plenty of other things that you can do. <laughs> Oops. Well, Let's just get into it, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, to start, though, uh, so we're going to be playing Jeopardy. And do, actually, let's go through our categories quick. Okay. So, so we'll have six categories. Um, so, yeah, welcome to Jeopardy with Katie and Jeremiah. Um, we have Invasive Species 101, uh, Native Species, Watersheds, What You Can Do, Yellow Iris, and big head and silver carp. So those are our cat categories and here's our board and then I'll let Jeremiah. Yes. So that quick crash course that we just gave you on aquatic invasive species, you're now gonna be put to the test, uh, but we're gonna try to make it as fun as we can. So if you do want to participate, feel free to uh, request to share your screen or microphone. And uh, Nikki who introduced us will be able to let you in for a quick second to ask and then answer your question. Um, if people end up not wanting to do this, then we can ask in the chat instead of the Q&A, we'll go to the chat and ask there. Um, and then if no one wants to do that either, then you guys are going to watch Katie and I play. <laughs> and uh, we're going to make sure that we make that part as fun as yeah. possible. So, But we want you guys to participate. So if you want to be a brave soul and, and ask to join yes. uh, and the screen share and pick a category with the money value, um, that would be great. And then answer the question. So yeah. yeah, we can, we can start. And so Nikki will let you in. Um, it looks like that it's not letting people request to join. So I see that Cody. Oh, Nikki, do you have? Is it, yes. What's it? Oh, here we go, Margaret. So we can only do five at a time. So I might just be in the background. So, um, more people can join. And Margaret, I'm going to let you in. Right. Oh, Margaret's got a whole bunch of people. So. <laughs> I've got the whole crew. 
Awesome. So Margaret, do you want to pick a, um, you and your crew, you want to pick a category and then a money value? Okay. We've we got to do 500, but which one? Um, what I do we feel most yellow iris. Iris. Okay. We'll do yellow iris for 500. <laughs> All right. All right. So what part? The yellow iris. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Fruit. laughs> roots. Roots. That yeah. is correct. So the roots. Are <laughs> nice. All right. Awesome. All right. So Margaret, I think we're gonna kick you now, right. and we have Nathaniel lined up. All right. I just unmuted you, Nathaniel. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Uh, Hello, uh, I want to do what you can do, 400. All right. So what are they doing in this picture? Uh, they're cleaning off the bottom of their boat to make sure there are no invasive species on the bottom. Is that, the, is that your I'm final answer? <laughs> yes. I was already clapping. You're, You're correct. <laughs> nice. Cool. 400 points. Awesome. So it looks like, Nikki, do we have somebody else lined up? It looks like Preston wants to join. Well, while we wait. Oh. oh, here we go. We got somebody. Hi, Tori. Would you like to go ahead and ask away? Um, Can we do what you can do for 500? Yes. All right. So what are they doing in this yes. picture? All right, somebody come sit here, because that's you Funny. is us. <laughs> so somebody um, ready to call on are us. Are they learning about invasive species and like you know, how to look at each one of them? I think. Uh, yes. So yes. So they're uh, the guy is teaching others about invasive species. I guess so that's a uh, that's an important part. So yes, you are correct. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so Jennifer, it looks like we have you lined up. You can put, the, put that down. Put your mask down. There you go. That's Good. you. Go. Okay. Uh, native species for 500. All right. Okay. So what is it called when a – oh, I forgot to mention this. All right, this is really <laughs> worth it. But what is it called when a river otter stores shells of mussels on the side of the river? No. If, if you if get you this one, get it, I take the full blame. Maybe yeah, you can go get it. There's a classroom full of kids here. Somebody should be able to answer it. Um, <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Um, I can give a hint. Yeah, give a hint. All right. So, what is a specific type of glove that you wear during the winter? Oh. Oh, heavy duty. All right, I heard it in the background. Yeah. So <laughs> mittens. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's mittens spelled with D's, uh, but these are uh, stockpiles of muscle shells that the otters and muskrats leave behind. Uh, would your class like to ask another question since I that was on me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead. Yep. Native species 400. All righty, I made sure to uh, say this one. So how many native freshwater mussels call the St. Croix their home? 41. 41. Final answer? Yes. yes. All right. Are you sure? Yes. 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 <laughs> You're right. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for playing. Right. Um, it looks like Jody's class. Uh, we have you lined up next. Hello. So feel Ask away. Hello, can you hear us? Hi. Yep, we can hear okay. you. I heard something for 500. Carp, carp for 500. Carp. All awesome. right. Lou, come up here. So what is the primary source of food for big head and silver carp? What do you got, guys? Plankton? Plankton, they're saying. Let's see. Yeah. You are correct. Nice. Nice. 
All right, it looks like in the chat we have, what can you do for 300? So let's go to that. So this is Cody. This is Cody. Thank you, Cody. So what can you do for 300? Here we go. All right, Cody, what are, what are they doing in this picture? Or what wanna, should you be doing? Or what should picture? you be doing in this picture? You can throw that in the chat right now if you'd like. And then if we don't see a question within the next few seconds, we'll go ahead and see if anybody else wants to try to answer it. So if anybody else wants to enter the answer into the chat of what you, what these people are doing or what you can do. I'm not seeing any. Well, Beth, I see that you just came on. Do you want to answer this question quick? Oh, somebody, oh, I just see that somebody put it in the chat. Washing their feet to get off the invasive species. Yes. Yeah, so removing all hitchhikers from our uh, clothes and our animals. All right. all right, Beth, can you hear us? Awesome, great. Do you want to ask a question? Can we do watersheds for 200? Yes, all right. So what state does the St. Croix River start in? Um, is it? Is that your final answer? Yeah, is it? Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Wisconsin. I All right, let's see. There you go. Yes. You got it. It's Wisconsin. So it actually starts up at <laughs> Douglas County um, at the Upper St. Croix Lake. Good work. All right, let's see. Is there anybody else in here? In the... Oh, Ella. Just do <laughs> oh, Ella, yes. All right, Ella. Would you like to ask? Yes. Is that us? Oh, yeah, I'm oh my God. <laughs> Can you say watersheds? Watersheds, 400. 400? 400? All right. 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? 500? That drains in value of water. Yeah. There we go. There, yes. <laughs> That's a great definition. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yep. So going from a high point yeah. to a low point. So, yep. So, yep. All right. All right. Well, let's see. Do we have anybody else queued up? I think there's a bit of a lag. So, you know, a big we have uh, Preston asking for invasive species for five hundred. All right. So, name an aquatic species that is native to Wisconsin and explain why it is not invasive. So, it might take a little bit to type out, but I believe in you, Preston. You got this. And since there is a little bit of a lag, we'll just make a kind of wait around a little bit. Katie, do you have an answer for this one? I do have an answer for this one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of right answers, though. There is, yes. So type it out, and we'll see if we can decipher it the best we can. I think the chat. There's a little bit of a leg in a chat. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure Preston's going to get this right, but do you want to give your answer? So if I were to answer this, um, I I would answer it. So an aquatic species that is native to Wisconsin, I would say the walleye, Walter the walleye, and explain why it is not invasive. So walleyes are in native to the St. Croix River watershed. This is their native range. They don't outcompete any of our other native species. They have natural predators, and they're part of our food web here in, in Wisconsin and Minnesota. So Were they introduced by humans? 
They were not <laughs> introduced by humans. They're nice. native. So that right. would be my answer. I think that'd probably be Preston's too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just not seen it in the chat yet. Okay, um, Preston, but feel free if you're still yes, typing, keep sending it, keep, sending away, it, keep answering it. But we're going to go to the next one since it's a little bit. Do we have anybody that would like to queue up? So somebody get up here. How about invasive species 400? 400. All right. Nice. All right. Yeah. So true or false, invasive species only produce a few eggs or seeds. False. They produce a mass amount of eggs that spread downriver. What an answer. That is that was a great answer. Yes. Round of applause for that yes. gentleman. Nice. Yeah. All right, somebody else come up while we're still in. Okay. Oh, oh, shoot. Go ahead if you can find somebody in Jennifer's class. Which one? Uh, Let's take one. Uh, Let's do uh, so carp for 400. Carp for 400? All right. So how were Asian carp introduced? Uh, oh, no. Asia. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great answer for where they came from. But how? how, how, but, how but how? They would die. <laughs> I don't think they have a clue. Yeah. All right. Well, we can answer it. <laughs> oh, shoot. I just put it's it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So Asian carp were first introduced to control of aquaculture and sewage ponds. So that's how they escaped into the river. <laughs> All right. So Jody's class, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, feel free okay. to. Yellow iris for 400. Yellow iris for 400. So how does yellow iris spread? The seeds float down river when it floods and it closes itself. Nice. Excellent work. Yes. Very good job. All right. I see a question in the chat. Um, so Sam asked invasive species for 300. All right. Sam. All right. This one's for Sam. So true or false, invasive species can tolerate many conditions. So we'll go ahead and wait just a few seconds for Sam's answer. Um, and then maybe since we have two classes loaded up, we can ask them too. But we'll see, we'll just wait a few. Do you have an answer? I do have an answer. Yeah. I think I have an answer. <laughs> it might. It's a 50-50 shot. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we can go ahead and see if Jennifer's class, if you want to unmute yourself. True or false? True. Okay. True. 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 Good work. Nice. Let's go. Awesome. Don't leave, Christian. Oh, we see a question from Nikki in the chat real quick. Is giant hogweed a native species? Giant hogweed is not a native species. It is not. not yet. And if you see it, which it's <laughs> commonly uh, located in the northern watershed, yeah. it looks like you're, it's cut, comes straight out of like Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's, it's a huge. big plant. Big plant. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's go to Jody's class real quick. Uh, if they would like to ask a quick question. Oh, watersheds 400. Watersheds 400, all right. So is more of the watershed in Wisconsin or Minnesota? Oh, Wisconsin. Final answer? Say it again. Wisconsin. All right, that's final answer. So Wisconsin is true. Good job. Nice. Excellent work. All right, Jennifer's class. Go ahead and unmute yourself. We're going to do native species 300. Great. All right. How many freshwater mussels in the St. Croix River are federally endangered? 
Five. 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 Let's see if you're right. Good work. Yes. Can you name any of them? <gasps> I, no, okay. I love the support. I love the round of applause. Yeah, wow. Right. So, um, let's see. Do we just want to kind of maybe bounce back to Jody's class and see if you guys have another one you want to ask? But if anybody is on the chat, just feel free to type yes. it in and we'll see it and we'll we'll include you if you don't want to join on video. Yeah, go ahead. All right, sheds for 300. Good, let's do it. All right. So how many square miles is the St. Croix River watershed? And you can ballpark it. We'll let you ballpark it. Uh, you know, I mean, that's pretty close. It's close. We'll, we'll give it. It's more towards, go ahead, 8,000. So it's 7,800 square miles. So we usually round up and say 8,000, but uh, 7,800 is. Uh, oh, so. All right. So we have um, in the chat real quick, we have invasive species for 200 from Nathaniel. So let's go ahead and do that quick. All right. So invasive species have natural predators, true or false? And we'll wait in the chat. Oh, I see it. So false. Very good job, Nathaniel. Nice. Awesome work. Nice. Yeah, Nathaniel. Nathaniel's logged in from home. He's part of our class. Group. Yeah. Oh, well, let's give him a round of applause then, huh? Nice. Out <laughs> <That> of <laughs> All right. And then Margaret, I see I, Margaret has another one in the chat real quick that we'll do. So yellow iris for 300. So why was yellow iris introduced to North America? It's pretty, yes, great, great answer. So it was introduced as an ornamental. Yes, and I think Margaret is from Osceola. So Margaret, if you and your friends go on the St. Croix River, you can see yellow iris blooming, gosh, end of June, yeah. uh, beginning of July. Mm -hmm. And so although it is pretty to look at, now you know it's invasive <laughs> and it's not good. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Jennifer's class, let's go ahead and get your question in quick, and then we'll go to Preston. Part for 300. Part for 300. What is the potential risk that the silver carp pose to recreationists on the river? They can jump out of the water. They can jump out of the water. And the, <gasps> yes, so physical harm to ourselves and our equipment due to their jumping out of their Nice, work. good job. All right, Preston, you ready? This is your time to shine. Invasive species 200. All righty. Or, well, we don't have invasive species 200 anymore. Can we do native? Cool. All right. What native plant relies on wet soil, sunlight, and plenty of water? What native plant? So we talked about one native plant in the slot in the PowerPoint. Hmm. It's been harvested in the St. Croix River watershed for centuries. You can eat part of it. You can eat part of it. <laughs> Just give me a minute quick. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, I see it in the chat. If you want to look in the chat, berries. It's not berries. It is wild rice. Wild rice. But berries is a good one because berries are fun to eat for sure. Make yep. sure make sure you're eating the right berries though. <laughs> All right. Uh, I saw a question from Anna. So what you can do for two hundred? We tried. So so what what does this picture make you think of doing? I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look in the chat. So when you have a bucket of bait after a fishing trip, what should you do? Yes. Or what shouldn't you do? Anna yeah. said, don't dump bait in different areas. That is a great, yes. Yes. So dispose of it in the trash and not in the lake. Good work. Nice. All right, Jennifer's class. Do you want to ask another one? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. 
Um, what do you think? Iris for 200. Yellow Iris for 200. Yellow Iris for 200. Where can you find Yellow Iris? In wetlands. In wetlands. <laughs> Aquatic habitats. Very good answer. So that includes wetlands. Yep, and then lake shorelines and river banks. All right, Jody's class, would you like to ask one? Uh, per 200. Oh, I just saw Max ask that one. So we're going to have Jody's class do carp for 100. Is so, that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's okay. right. Cool. So what species of Asian carp have been identified in the St. Croix River? A uh, big head and silver. Good job. Nice. But no reproducing populations yet. So yes. Pack on wood. Good nice. Work. All right. So Max asked uh, carp for 200. All right, Max. How heavy can a big head carp get? Oh, man. Oh, feel. Cool. One hundred and ten pounds. Jeez, these kids! They, I tell you, they paid attention. Yeah, awesome. nice. <laughs> All right, Preston, do you want to ask another one? Yeah, let's go. All Can right. I do. Cody, let's go. Watersheds one hundred. Watersheds one hundred. All right. So, what watershed are we in? I guess I don't know where you're coming from, but for us. What specific one did we talk about yes. today? <laughs> um. hmm. Cody's got it. All right, let's hear it, Cody. Cody. Minnesota. So the Minnesota know. River is not the St. Croix or <laughs> is not the watershed we're in. We are in the St. Croix River watershed. But, but it does encompass Minnesota and does, Wisconsin. Yes. So, so we'll kind of give part, it to you. Yeah. We'll give you 50 bucks. Just kidding. We're not giving you any money. <laughs> <laughs> St. Croix River watershed. All, All right. right. Uh, so we have the we have a three minute warning now. So we're done at eleven forty five. So Jody's class, do you want to ask a few more? You can do 100. All right. So what is going on in this picture? <laughs> um, the trailer is bringing a lot of seaweed and algae up from their um, boating trailer. Dog. So they have to take it off. Excellent answer right there. Make sure that we're removing all those plants from a boat trailer so we're not bringing them to another body of water. And depending on where you're tuning in from in Minnesota, it's actually a law. So if you do have uh, hanging, dangling weeds on your boat trailer and you're uh, transporting them, you can technically get pulled over by uh, by the police and, and they'll tell you to get rid of them. We have uh, Nathaniel asking for invasive species 100. All right, Nathaniel. Terrestrial invasive species are found in the water, true or false? So we'll give it a few seconds here. Do you have an answer to this one, Jeremiah? I think I might. Um, oh, I think uh, Nathaniel answered it already. So he said, true. However, terrestrial is actually not aquatic. So aquatic invasive species and terrestrial. So terrestrial can be found outside of water and wetlands. Um, and then Margaret asked for yellow iris for 100. Oops. All right, name a species of iris located in a native species of iris in the San Croix wa uh, River watershed. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely tell it's getting to the end. So I talked about one in the slides. So Margaret, do you remember what I said? Northern blue flag iris. Beautiful. Work. Nice. All right. And then native species for 100. Anybody can answer. Throw it in the chat. Let's see. Last question of the day. Which native species is in neg negatively affected by the yellow iris? So throw all your answers in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll end up saying bye soon. 
So Beth answered Northern Blue Flag, great. Jody answered Blue Flag, Blue Flag, I'm seeing it. So I guess the correct answer is any of the native shoreline aquatic vegetation. So Blue Flag iris, like many of you already said. So great work. Uh, Nikki, are we all done? Yes, it is 11.45. So I just want to say thank you guys for that interactive game. And then thank you all for participating through either the chat or the webcam. It was really fun and interactive. Um, oh, I didn't think really four though, so I don't yeah, know. No, that's okay. And I guess since there are some teachers online, uh, we do offer this uh, game as a little plug for us. We do offer this virtual game um virtually over zoom so if you ever wanted to play it with different topics in the future just uh send, send us an email <laughs> the St. Croix River Association an email so yeah but thanks so much yes. for playing and thank, thank you. you so much for engaging and interacting it's so fun when people can join via uh, uh video and, and interact especially since we can't be in person with you guys so thank you good work everybody Yes, good work. And right now, so we will have lunch and exhibits, so you can kind of grab your lunch, um, check out all the different videos at the expo sessions. Um, so those are all really interesting. And then we will be back at the sessions at 1230. So there's three different sessions you can go to. So discover the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. There is Are We Able? Yes. Are We Willing? And then the third session is Lessons from Standing Rock, a firsthand account. So be back at 1230 at one of those sessions. So thank you guys and enjoy your lunch. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Bye. Bye.